Many people still don't know the story of the Detroit Riverwalk. Placemaking. What makes a place special and unique to you? What makes a place somewhere where you would want to come back to? Proponents of sustainable development and new urbanism talked about building porches on front houses and how important that was to interact with your neighbors, to keep an eye on things, to, to, to be part of the community. For decades, people would come over and sit on the front porch. It was a gathering place. You learned about what was going on in the neighborhood. The Detroit River Walk is Detroit's new waterfront porch for the community. That's why I chose Waterfront Porch as the title. In 1989, I was attending a meeting on the 17th floor of Tower 600 of Detroit's Renaissance Center that faced east and upriver towards Belle Isle. It was a striking view of three sets of cement silos, material storage piles, dilapidated and abandoned buildings, and surface parking lots. To me, the cement silos were like sentinel soldiers standing guard on Detroit's east waterfront that had long lost its industrial glory. Today, the Detroit Riverwalk is returned over a billion dollars in economic benefits in the first 10 years and has over three million annual tourists. And it is only a little over 60% done. Detroit was the largest city in the United States to go through bankruptcy. The Detroit River was one of the most polluted rivers in North America. In its first 10 years, the Detroit Riverfront Conservancy raised $140 million to build the first portion of the Detroit Riverwalk in a city that went through bankruptcy. If clean up the Detroit River thus far, building a Detroit Riverwalk can happen in a city of like Detroit. It gives hope to others that it can be done in their backyard as well. I like to de describe the Detroit River Walk as a necklace where the unique parks like Mount Elliott Park, Cullen Plaza, Gable Richard Park are beads in the necklace and the strands are the Greenway Trails, the River Walk. It's a good way to think about it. This is a new front porch for people in Detroit, but it also reaches into the neighborhoods. The DeQuinder Cut comes off the Detroit River Walk and goes to, extends to Eastern Market and Midtown, Wayne State University, and the New Center area. So there are two other Greenway connectors like this that are coming, uh, Joseph Campo and May Creek Greenways, that will be extensions into the neighborhoods to connect people from the neighborhoods to this amazing resource called the Detroit River Walk. There's only so much fresh water and we have to be care for it. We have to have a stewardship ethic. So now we have this unbelievable opportunity to meet the needs of the world, be an example for others in the sustainability paradigm shift. Paradigm shifts a significant change in thinking that results in a completely new outlook about something. Think of what the printing press did. Think of what an iPad and a personal computer have done in terms of paradigm shifts. Well, Detroit has a long history of uh, responding to paradigm shifts. And they needed lots of ships to move people and goods to help settle the West. Detroit became a leader in shipbuilding history. There were more ships built along the Detroit River in the 1890s than anywhere else in the United States. Again, Detroit met 
the needs of the nation and world. We all know about the automobile paradigm shift where Henry Ford perfected the assembly line and helped put the world on wheels. But there's another one also, and that's the arsenal of democracy. When the goal was to win World War II, FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, President Roosevelt converted all civilian productivity to military productivity with one single purpose, and that is to win World War II. Detroit responded by becoming the arsenal of democracy and helping win the Allied victory eventually in World War II. So Detroit has this long history of responding to paradigm shifts and meeting the needs of our nation and the world for that matter. Back in the 1960s, Detroit River was one of the most polluted rivers in North America. Think about it. There were massive amounts still of oil coming into the Detroit River. There were still winter duck kills due to oil. Fish that were unsafe to eat. We had birds that couldn't reproduce. We had raw sewage coming in at many points along the Detroit River. So now, what has happened since that time? We have seen dramatic reductions in oil discharges and winter duck kills due to oil pollution have been eliminated. We've seen over a 90% reduction in phosphorus and concentration and loading from municipal wastewater treatment plants. We've seen over a 70% decline in mercury in fish. We've seen a 90% decline in DDT and PCBs in herring gull eggs off of Fighting Island. We've remediated over a million cubic meters of contaminated sediment. But that's not the best part of the story. The best part of the story is that bald eagles could not reproduce for 25 years. They are back in 25 locations throughout the watershed. Peregrine falcons couldn't reproduce because of these organochlorine pesticides. They are back and now we have fledged 30 young in southeast Michigan. Osprey, the same story with them. They came back and nested in cell phone towers down on the lower end of the Detroit River for the first time since the 1890s. Lake sturgeon, we have built nine sturgeon spawning reefs to help this threatened species. Same story for Lake Whitefish. They're back first time since 1916, reproducing in the river. And walleye back in the 70s were in a crisis state as defined by the Great Lakes Fishery Commission. Today we're part of the walleye capital of the world and we have $500,000 tournaments. If you add that up, the return of bald eagles, peregrine falcons, osprey, lake sturgeon, lake whitefish, walleye, and even beaver, it's one of the single most remarkable ecological recovery stories in North America. If you talk about r relating that to the Detroit River Walk, Mark Wallace, the president and CEO of the Detroit Riverfront Conservancy says, without the cleanup of the Detroit River, the transformation of the water's edge would not have been possible. The, a key catalyst for this reconnecting to this water was the cleanup of the Detroit River. It's a fundamental foundational building block for what we all do. The best is yet to come, and I encourage you to come down and experience firsthand the Detroit Riverwalk.